I'm almost certain many of you are clicking on this review thinking, what on earth is Ultra Age? But man, that looks pretty decent. Fully expecting to be disappointed with some poor performing hack and slash mess. Well, let me tell you, this small South Korean team have almost nailed it. We'll go through the story, gameplay, controls, and some of the best performance I've seen on Switch. After the last couple of games we've covered on the channel, and knowing that next stage the developers just were four university friends who absolutely loved action games and thought they could do a decent job really does put a smile on my face. It's essentially the developer equivalent of what we've done with the channel. And do be sure to leave your comments down below. We're going to be giving away a couple of copies of this one. Just share your thoughts on it when you've watched the review. Could this be one of the surprise indie hits of the year? Let's find out. The story centers around the Earth in the distant future. With the absence of any humans and a long distant memory of what they once were, you play as protagonist Age, who's accompanied by his trusty, if slightly irritating, AI companion Helvis. You're so impatient. And you just wait quietly. While... As seems to be the case throughout all human history, mankind is divided. There are those who live in the orbital arc above the Earth and those remaining in the shelter. The land is ravaged by huge beasts who draw upon crystal energy. There's a civil war of sorts taking place between those two factions and you'll meet a few characters whose motivations are unclear. And while I felt some of the writing was a little lackluster, it's a story that's easy enough to follow, makes sense and is reasonably well rounded out by the end. Where Ultra Age shines the most is in its gameplay. Although a reasonably linear experience, you are given some freedom in how you traverse the world. You have a jump and double jump and a slightly odd mechanic that allows you to fast forward time 12 hours to restore some of the crystals you'll find around the world. It's not something that was particularly well utilized and I didn't really pay much attention to that at all, but it's that combat that makes it stand out. With enemies typically being split between those that are cybernetic and those that are biological, Age will have and unlock several different blades as he progresses, and each of them will have their own efficacies. For example, if you're fighting a biological opponent, then the katana is the best option. It will slice through enemies, causing bleed damage and rapidly whittle down their health. However, when facing a robot, you're going to want to switch to one of the other weapons, such as the large claymore. But if they have shields, then yep, you're going to quickly switch to your lightning saber. But for me, my inner Final Fantasy VIII was loving the gunblade. weapons have a light and heavy attack and you'll see a number shown down here which denotes the number of each weapon you've collected. This might sound a little confusing but let me explain. Weapons do have a durability. The more you use them they'll drop down in durability and when they reach the bottom you can perform one final devastating special move. It's an area of effect screen clearing bombastic blast that sends them flying in all directions. But it feels like controlling an anime in the best possible way. Now each of these sabers also has their own skill tree. Age will earn crystal points which can be allocated at his leisure when he reaches a save checkpoint. And it's this same currency which will be used to upgrade Helvis, increasing the amount of heals you can do or his scan ability. And when in battle, using that D-pad to quickly press down to heal, it's all very seamless and fluid. Fights tend to take a locked in approach. Enemies may drop from the ceiling or you might stumble upon a group of them and defeat them will then let you progress. Something I always look for and love to see in games is where the developer puts in segments where the enemies will be fighting amongst themselves. It's a throwback to some of the greats like Half-Life. Character movement is also a very impressive area. Using the triggers you can dodge and if timed perfectly this will initiate a slowdown mechanic that affords you a few precious moments within the frenetic combat to make some tactical decisions. There's a lock-on ability which can be shifted with the right analog stick and by stringing together combat combinations of moves, switching your weapons on the fly, you can create what are known as run combos. And through unlocking certain skills, this will increase your damage, the critical hit rate, and as a beautiful aside, it just looks awesome. It rewards skillful play, and very often, if you're able to avoid those attacks and keep stringing and multiplying those combos, you'll be given a one-button kill prompt. Fights start out relatively simple, but they escalate fast, and that's where you'll begin to need to use things like your wire skill. 
During the overworld areas, it can be used to help you traverse, but in combat, it's very much a scorpion get over here to drag enemies into your reach. It doesn't work on the larger ones, but it can be the difference between life and death when you're absolutely outnumbered. And finally, for combat, there's critical rage. This builds up in the background and then tapping right on the D-pad sends you into a rage which increases your damage, your critical hit chances, as well as your speed. It wouldn't be a solid hack and slash though without some decent boss encounters. And this is where Ultra Age stumbles ever so slightly in one area. They're generally very well designed, they have multi-stages, and they require you sometimes to use different blades. I didn't feel like the blade mechanic was particularly utilized until some of the latter fights, and the difficulty balancing on most of them is fine. However, there is one in particular that is brutally difficult. You might feel like you've stumbled into your favorite Souls-like. And personally, although these were a little too extreme and there are no difficulty options, it was more the placement of the most recent checkpoint that was a bit of a head scratcher. There's one in particular where you have to run from the top of a mountain, fight several groups of enemies, and then do the boss fight. When you're failing three, four, five or six times, this inevitably leads to some frustration. It's not a deal breaker for me. The hardest fight in the game probably took me 10 attempts, but it's worth noting if you're not a fan of tough experiences. I felt the world design was quite good in terms of its atmosphere. Obviously, it's a very empty place, but the architectural design and the overly large areas certainly facilitate that combat. The areas are mixed up with some platforming segments and shifting perspectives, and the world has a few hidden and items for you to find but don't expect an open world experience. This is definitely on the more linear side. Finally then, let's just finish with a couple of gripes that I had with the game. And the first of those would be some asset recycling. There are a few areas where you'll literally be performing the same actions in seemingly the exact same spaces. Sections such as this, where you have a choice of three different routes. You move into a room, enemies drop from the ceiling and the doors close and you have to fight your way out. I don't mind that in principle, but it is recycled at least two times during the whole game's length. And feel a little bit like filler just to prolong the experience. And at the very end of the game, it commits a cardinal sin by making you play through all of the boss fights again. It's classic gameplay extension 101. Now, gripes aside, I think Ultra Age is a real achievement. It's a fast-paced, quite beautiful-looking action RPG at a reasonable price. I love the ability to customize my character and the fact that each of those blades had their own skill tree that drastically affects the moves that they can perform. It's really impressive stuff. I see great things things for this developer in their future. Overall, I give gameplay 17 out of 20. Controls are decent, allowing you to customize the sensitivities and having a lock on mechanics good, but there were still a couple of times where I lost control and ended up looking in the wrong direction. Control score 16 out of 20. Ultra Age is so interesting for me because it runs on the Unreal Engine 4, which has been used several times on the Switch, but not nearly as well as it is here. Yes, they've employed a couple of tricks, like some fog in certain areas, but still, I think this looks fantastic. The character models look decent, the animations are solid, and some of the world areas look really beautiful. There's some dynamic lighting. Yes, some of the textures look a little bit flat and there's not a great deal of foliage, but the overall art direction puts it somewhere between a low poly and a high detail style that just works for it. When you contrast this to some of the games we've had, it's a real testament to what good programming can do. It runs at 30 FPS, locked out almost exclusively, but they've used V-Sync, so the frame pacing is very good, and this delivers a very smooth image to the eye. It's not 100%, there were a couple of areas where I noticed some minor stutter, but overall it's very good and they clearly had some headroom, as when playing in handheld, it's equally smooth and video capture remains, i.e. we had a enough room to keep video capture in. The musical score and audio are also great, but definitely go for those Japanese voices. I was just enjoying the unfamiliar air for a moment. A robot like... Combat just sounds satisfying, and it's the visual and audio synchronicity that makes it so. I thought the cutscenes were excellent, but the English dub, eh, not so much. And visuals would be even higher if we had a touch more enemy variety and a tiny bit less assets recycling. Visuals and performance score 18 out of 20. Audio scores 18 out of 20. Ultra Age is a reasonably premium £26.99. If you're after a fast-paced hack and slash, you're definitely going to enjoy yourself here and there is also a free demo that you can download to see if it's for you. Personally, with some of the filler elements that are latter in the game, I feel like £20 would have been perfect or your regional equivalent. Now that said, I don't think you're going to feel like you've been robbed if you spend that. You'll probably be too blown away by how much fun it is, but 
Try out the demo and see what you think for yourself. For the collectors among you, you'll be pleased to hear that Play Asia are offering a Ultra Age physical release, which includes the English voices. You can pre-order that and that'll come out on December the 31st. Value scores 15 out of 20. Ultra Age is going to be one of the surprise releases on Switch this year. Not only does it run really well, but it is a boatload of fun with a few exceptionally difficult boss fights and a surprisingly deep combat system. It gets a Switch Up score of 84%. Yes! <laughs> I got to review a decent game this month. Happy days, about time. Ay caramba. Thanks so much for watching the channel, we really do appreciate it. We've got loads more reviews coming up for you, so if you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. And as always, a huge thanks to our patrons. You guys are amazing, and it really helps us out. As always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!